Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Future Friday. In today's show, we're gonna talk about electric bike. It was a viewer request, so let's dive right into it. Well, first, what we are talking about, we are talking about a two, uh, you know, vehicle, electric vehicle system here. Now, motorbikes are not that popular in USA and European countries. However, they are like kind of mainstay in India, so it's kind of it's most people's first bike, uh, the first vehicle here in India. So it is a very big market sector in Asia, so to say. And this is supposed to be 100% fuel free because of the size and weight limitation of a motorbike. Motorbikes are rarely built into what we call hybrids. So generally they are either 100% internal combustion engine or 100% electric. They rarely have any, uh, you know, hybrid situation. And when I'm talking about electric bike, well, technically you can make into your bicycle into this. But this time we are talking about specifically something that is performance focused. Basically, you buy this, you ride this, you are riding a motorbike. Then you give a damn well about it, whether it's electric or not. So basically performance wise, you will not be able to tell whether it's electric or uh, you know petrol system basically that's the whole selling point of this now the ultraviolet the company that i'm talking about here it's an indian startup and they started in 2015 now they realized first or early on they have an image problem and this is kind of similar what uh, elon musk faced is that there was a reason why they bought a lotus uh, chassis and then they put electrified it so to say now the reason for doing that was very simple the first thing when uh, pe people think about electric car is not something that is smooth that is fast that is charismatic that's like people used to think electric car is just like you know van that people want to do when they are like you know you know just uh, relaxing and you know hippie kind of scenario so they had to change that image image is very important because vehicle is a part of our ego so to say and we like our uh, you know ego to be big it's like mine is bigger so your bike and your car cannot be look like you know oh, okay cheap thing even though they may cost a lot but if they do not look the part like if people don't feel good about it you're not gonna be able to sell it it's like you want to amplify your product basically people are like whoa and they realize that very early on and i'm quite happy about this simply because there are many other uh, indian uh, companies that are like you know just, just taking a chinese model and just like you know fine-tuning it re reinforcing it for indian roads and that's it they are selling it like that's that's sad that's just sad but these guys uh, i'm genuinely impressed that they are like okay we will do this and i'm proud of it it's like that amazing of a job they did because from day one they realized image is everything here people have to feel it it's like whoa this is a bike first and then give a damn about whether it's electric or not so what are their unique selling point now so unique selling point first of them uh, is very important one is i mean recent year, uh, years it has become much and much more important and not to mention few months have us uh, taught us anything that you want to be self-reliant they built this damn thing up from ground so they do not have like okay we're gonna mass import the chassis or build it somewhere no everything is built in india except the battery cells itself they're imported from multiple uh, vendors and all that black like. maybe even in the future that also could be sourced by some indian manufacturer like panasonic or uh, you know tesla even who knows so that's uh, removing that part, removing the cell itself, everything from the battery bank to whole chassis, it's made in India. That is quite amazing, uh, you know, feat, so to say. And that allowed them certain luxuries that most systems don't have. For example, this is one thing which generally baffles me to this day. It's like, I bought a car, it has an info system. And I'm like, why the heck it does not have eSIM into it where it can directly rely, like, you know, GPS, I do not need to use my mobile phone for this puppet, which some Chinese uh, Android docs can do, but why the heck it's not inbuilt this because they built it from ground up as in every pipe every choice uh, you know chassis bent and uh, welding and all that they built this from ground up for a smart technology future so everything in it has a lot of sensor what does that inherently be well your car also has a lot of sensor but most of it is un inaccessible so to say so let's say there is a sensor that is g sensor only activates when the airbags goes off here it's completely different what does that translate to that translate to if you are riding on a let's say uh, you know a racetrack you can collect all that data directly into a mobile phone with everything which includes acceleration deceleration uh, curves angles everything because they have gyroscope accelerometer every tom dick and harry sensor they can put into it they put into it and that uh, does not have just like okay for some niche people who want to track trace their vehicle not only that the benefit of that if you feed this data into ai over time ai can learn from it and the computer has a simple framework, garbage in garbage out so if you want to put good stuff into you have to have good stuff coming out of your vehicle so they have everything fine-tuned basically 
how much electricity the battery is giving how much electricity the motor controller is converting and wasting into heat how much uh, that is going into the wheel and how wheel is accelerating that will be compensated based on accelerometer data so all that data stream goes to the main controller and benefit of that it's much richer than you will think the data that is coming off of this motorbike directly without uh, using your data from mobile phone and all that is much richer which over time will allow the companies to fine tune the basically firmware so to say of this vehicle to become more awesome tesla also does the same thing and another aspect many times we live in india we don't like the idea of like you know going yellow because there are a lot of uh, you know people crossing the road streets so you do you want to be make sure whether you want to feel the acceleration but you don't want to like you know randomly realizing that hey you are traveling at 150 kmph you want to be calm so and especially with police and all that you want to be like damn sure about it so this has a speed limiter directly in a mobile phone basically you don't even have to think about it like okay i'm gonna limit it to 100 so you want to enjoy the ride and no matter how much you ramp you do it will not go higher than that then you can also control the torque now why is that important torque basically torque is directly how much uh, is, depending on your controller it could be translated into voltage or sometimes into ampere but it always translates into more energy drained from the battery you don't inherently want to do that so if you want to just calm relax right you know office to home or home to office you want to tone down the throttle because you don't want to get excited it's like mm -hmm, because electrics they have ludicrous pickup even this one has ludicrous pickup and uh, regenerative braking all these parameters it's fine-tuned controlled and it's quite amazing like they actually went into the details of it it's just not like okay uh, there is an app and you can press a button which will press the horn to you know locate it all those features are thought out integrated and even the battery banks they have if you steal somebody else battery bank you cannot plug it into it because there is a handshake to it so every aspect of it is thought out in terms of smart and connectivity it is inherently like a fighter jet and they are following this fighter jet motif thoroughly they are not like say, okay it should look like a fighter jet no they are like okay how does a fighter jet uh, you know systems uh, calculate that kind of thing they are of course utilizing a smaller version of it but they are doing it it's like let's collect hundreds of data points to make sure we understand how bikes are behaving in a road not just like you know in lab condition no, in road in people's hand and then collect that data into a server to fine tune our next generation next generation and uh, firmware and all that so surprisingly high level of unique selling point then we come to the design aspect now this is where i feel truly proud because i'm gonna be honest with you guys like uh, i never thought indians will do something this amazing not because we don't have talent it's like i can guarantee you was like go to whatever car manufacturer you want there would be indians there not 100 percent of them but damn large number of them uh, so generally in India, we like people have this mentality of making it cheap. Just, just make it cheap enough, man. Just cheap. But this time, they went completely all in. They went ball, balls to the wall scenario. So every aspect of the design is made in such a way that it makes a statement. It's a statement. Basically, you are driving quote unquote Rolex, so to say. And that fighter jet motive gave them an actual standing point. So design has a unique problem to it. Basically, you cannot design something truly unique because it will look ugly. So you have to have a balancing scenario. So generally, every artist will take inspiration from things. You can be like, hey, let's say you want to watch a movie like Pacific Rim. There is an inspiration from manga. So this sort of scenario is always done. It's necessary for art to actually, you know, stick. So what they did, the fighter jet, again, the outer chassis is directly inspired from fighter jets, current stealth gen fighter jets. So that motive allowed them to create three options they have white one which looks futuristic and like you know you want to stand out there's a red one which is like you know they call it laser variant and there is a b2 stealth bomber variant so to say it literally the curves and the so te texture finish everything looks like a stealth bomber so they've spent time i'm like the moment you see this is like whoa like it's not like okay hey just a bike no somebody has spent time building now you may love it or you may hate it that's up to you again you all have taste but you cannot say that they did not put effort into this that that's the biggest roadblock they kicked out flat out it's like no we will put as much effort as we can put into this so that's quite amazing that truly makes me proud because like look at it and i'm like wow time now what about the battery because again uh, heart and soul of a electric system is the battery so they built three independent battery banks now many electric vehicles available in uh, india basically motorbikes they have to one or two way of setup but generally it's integrated into the chassis you can't do anything or generally they have the ability to swap the battery the reason why they want swappable is that because it does wear out over time no matter whether it's five years or ten years but it will wear out you want to use your motorbikes for longer than that so people create the idea of uh, battery swappable battery banks consequence of that generally doing it in one big battery bank there is another manufacturer who does that one big battery bank it's so big it's so heavy that is very difficult you may sound ah, i'm gonna just you know pull out the battery bank 18 kilograms does not sound too much but again if you have to do it daily yeah it becomes frustrating so 
they thought of that so they have three packs and you can ri- drive the basically motorbike using one only so in case of a failure of a mal- uh, you know malfunction in one of them or loss of one of them your bike will still work that's not an issue that's awesome and you can easily pull out it's a, like a human hand level there when they uh, talking about their launch event they were very clear about this it's like from day one we wanted to make sure it's under 10 kilogram because anybody who's handling a motorbike especially of this caliber they can easily comfortably handle 10 kilograms that's like you know we can do this so they finally managed to drop the weight to 8 kilogram at this point people are like we will just do it for fun it's like you know a bit of dumbbell weight and all that so the battery banks is thoroughly designed by them with uh, hundreds of layers of communication and uh, military grade uh, you know systems where they are the connectors that connects the battery to the basically chassis it's a military grade for simple reason again this is a waterlogged country you could have a, a scenario where like, you know it's been raining for two months and all that jazz so they had to design it to be waterproof all that has been thought of and not to mention the electricity does not flow unless there is a handshake to uh, you know happen properly and handshake is like done wirelessly it's like a kind of nfc so uh, so if somebody steals your battery boop it will block it so all those thought uh, features they have integrated and they have multiple layers of redundancy in the battery itself so in case of a uh, crash accidents there is a, they worked very hard and they're saying their inspiration is directly battery banks that are used in nasa's equipment that was like their design languages like okay we're gonna do what they do again uh, you know within the confines of the budget uh, but that's the uh, core selling point of this like this is safe as safe as they can be even if you drop the battery bank directly onto half hard pavement it will still remain intact without cell damage so they put a lot of effort thought into this and uh, the, the total capacity is uh, 4.5 kilowatt hour it may sound uh, you know very little for in terms of coming from a car battery but for motorbike it's good enough and each bank is 8.6 kilogram now fast charging is possible in this they have uh, like you know giant fuel cap you open that up there is a you know car level fast charging port if you want to do that you can do that however that's impractical that's not necessary uh, again if people want to do long rides they create a supercharger supercharger so to say is basically you can put it in your backpack and they design that also to be a half size of a laptop so it's something that you can truly carry on a sports bike that's what uh, like you know surprises me it's like the amount of effort they put into every little detail is mind-blowing so if you are, have a place like let's say you have 15 ampere circuit which are generally used for large air condition and all that's quite easy to find in india plug it it will speed charge speed charging can be done 1.5 hour now you what if you don't want the idea of like you know carrying a supercharger or you know plugging uh, pulling out the batteries no mention there is a normal plug which you can do like normal 5 amp hour plug 220 volts and you can just plug it it will charge in three to four hours you don't even have to think about it and that is awesome because again almost every indian uh, who has a garage home garage so to say uh, they have the luxury of uh, a normal plug there not a supercharger not like three phase power normal plug charger and your big bike, uh, you know, basically your motorbike would be standing still for what whole night when you are sleeping. So that's quite amazing. And the idea of this uh, portable batteries are also that that if you live in an apartment complex and let's say you all you have is just a parking, no electrical system, you can just uh, carry this to your uh, you know room and charge it there. They have a cradle also, and the cradle can charge three of them, and they are working on a speed charging cradle which can charge very quickly. So because again this is a track vehicle also, so that, that's why they want that ability of battery swapping. So you can continue the fun. So inherently, a lot of thought put into the batteries also. So what we can expect in the future? Well, flat out, even in 2021, uh, this will be early stage. So right now we are not at a stage where this can be classified as mass production. This is like, just go there, buy it. It's not there yet. And even though the bike has been quote unquote launched, the delivery is still uh, in October 2020. And I'm reasonably sure that would be shifted uh, much more back due to the world ending, so to say. So there is a, uh, early, uh, these are in early stage. What does that mean? That inherently means in terms of cost, there is an early adapter tax and it's uh, it's expensive basically. So in motor bikes we generally measure bikes and like you know in layman's term cc's basically 300 cc's like good bike that at that point you were like no i'm driving something serious again it's not a harley Davidson or something like that but it's like something serious uh, 200 is like yeah you spend a little bit we generally drive 150 and all that because that's like that's cheap budget and all that chess 100 uh, 200 is like you know you're spending some money and 300 is like yeah it's something serious the company is selling this as a 300 alternative but uh, everybody who drives it's like 
uh, for uh, how uh, you know snappy this is it will feel like 300 but in terms of like final raw speed it's not that powerful so if people are like yeah think of it as a, like a 200 cc motorbike not 300 cc what does that translate it has 0 to 60 under 2.9 seconds that's fast that's like whoa fast uh, but 0 to 100 is 7.2 seconds we're like what the hell that happens because tor motor runs out of torque at that point so it's not that it cannot go faster than that. It will go, but it will take time to, uh, you know, reach that point. So that is why everybody who's driving is like, bro, yeah, it has a lot of torque because uh, the motor torque itself is 90 Newton meter. Now you're like, uh, motor could could be higher, but here's the deal. They wanted a high RPM option because sound is critical uh, to a motorbike. And they wanted to make sure, because they were going with fighter jet motif, they wanted to, uh, the you know, the engine to sound like a fighter jet engine. It sounds like that. Like you can see the video footage, the camera, uh, when it's going past the camera, it's like, it literally feels like a jet engine. It may be annoying to some people, but it's re uh, really fine tuned for that. And when it goes through a drive reduction, it reaches 450 Newton meter. Now there are bikes that can do 450 Newton meters, undeniably, many bikes, none of them are 150 kilogram. So it's quite powerful, quite cheap for that kind of scenario. That is why it's like classified as a super bike because of that oomph, that zero to 60 is like, whoa, fast. But it does have early adapter tags and they are specifying the company is very clear about it. It's like we're gonna keep improving it even if after you buy it, we're gonna keep polishing it, making it better, making it better because it's three lakhs. Three lakhs is around enough where you can get a you know very early starter car. And car is always better than a bike. So there is a lot of potential here, but there is an early adapter tax. Now, I truly want them to succeed because I was genuinely blown away. Like this is an Indian product. Somebody built it in India. I am like, bro, I'm done. Like this is truly awesome to see. So this was my presentation of this uh, startup company and electric motorbikes in uh, you know hopefully this would have uh, allowed you to understand uh, that electric bike scene a bit more well hopefully in that scenario you will click the like button share it amongst your friend that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i'd urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me extra disappointment please leave a comment because i try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching